Now we're finished talking about the fun stuff. Now we have to get to the actual business here. The Los Angeles Lakers, they it's been reported that there are three finalists for their head coaching position that's open. Um, do you can you tell anything? Are you can you read the tea leaves, Mark, and, and look at these three candidates and, and kind of give you an indication of what the Lakers are looking for? Yeah, I think even with the Lakers narrowing down their candidates, it's clear that they're still keeping an open mind because of what the resumes of each of these candidates are. Terry Stotts has a lot of NBA head coaching experience. He's known as uh, having more of an offensive mindset as opposed to what Frank Vogel had on the defensive side of the floor. Darvin Ham, he hasn't been a head coach yet, but he has pedigree of being a former NBA player, having experience dealing with star players a la Giannis. And then you look at someone like Kenny Atkinson. He has had head coaching experience uh, before, but he's been known uh, to be a head coach that has been more about the player development end. So it really comes down to what are the Lakers going to prioritize? And that part isn't really determined yet, partly because they're still going through that process. So interesting. And since we're talking about the Lakers, we may as well just talk about this, too. Uh, Zach Levine, when asked, of course, he talked about how he grew up a Lakers fan. Is there a possibility that he could end up on this Lakers roster? Will they continue to try and get high powered big name free agents or will they try to build it through the draft? Well, I, I don't think right now it's realistic at that at this point because the only spending tool they have is a taxpayer mid-level exception at six million. So it would have to result in the sign-in trade, but in that sign-in trade, it would involve Russell Westbrook, and I just don't think that the the Lakers can pull that off because of all the question marks about not only a salary cap number but his fit and what it would come to you know have be be able to pull off that deal with having the right number of players align with that. Uh, so I think Zach Levine, he's not going to wear purple and gold. And now it's a matter of on the Lakers end, can they find a market with Westbrook, with other teams, with having some sort of combination of role players that fulfill positional needs? And if not, if they come back and uh, retain Russell Westbrook, can they find the right head coach to m get the best out of him? I know Terry Stotts, for example, has been telling the Lakers that he feels uh, intrigued with wanting to coach Russ and thinks that he can – uh, tap into things uh, as far as bringing out his offensive brilliance that he wasn't able to show last season. But that remains to be seen. There's a lot of question marks about uh, is it enough to just have more games with Russ playing with LeBron and AD? And whether you're a Russ fan or not, there's also the question of how do you build the rest of the roster? Because right now, the only spending tools is they have that $6 million trade uh, exception or taxpayer mid-level exception and then veterans minimum deals. So you're not going to have a lot of uh, windows of opportunity with upgrading the roster around them. We just don't have enough time, Mark. I feel like I could ask you 30 more questions, but I've got to let you go. We appreciate you joining us so much, Mark Medina. And you know what? I, you said something, question marks. Maybe you should have a podcast called Question Marks. and you.